When you hear the Netherlands, you might think of just this country, right? But actually, it's part of something bigger called the Kingdom of the Netherlands. This kingdom doesn't just include the Netherlands itself, but also some places you might not expect. Three municipalities called Bonaire, St. Eustatius and Saba, plus three countries that run their own show, Aruba, Curaçao and St. Maarten. Confusing, right? The Netherlands captivates with its iconic tulips, picturesque windmills and lively streets brimming with bicycles weaving through breathtaking architecture. Its capital, Amsterdam, earns the nickname Venice of the North, thanks to its extensive network of canals that crisscross the entire city, a beauty that has earned it a spot on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Home to over 17 million residents, the Netherlands nestles between Germany to the east and Belgium to the south and is cradled by the North Sea to the north and west. This advantageous maritime location has proven to be incredibly beneficial, especially for trade. To understand how the Netherlands secured its position within the European Union, we must turn back the pages to the start of the 20th century, where the Netherlands' policy of strict neutrality during World War I proved to be surprisingly effective, allowing it to stand as a peaceful haven while most of the rest of Europe was engulfed in conflict. This success, however, was not to be repeated in World War II, when the German Panzer Division rolled in in 1940, blatantly disregarding the Dutch neutrality signs. The quick overwhelming of Dutch forces in just five days starkly reminded the Dutch that sometimes staying out of the fray just isn't an option. In the aftermath of the war, amid efforts to rebuild and recover, the Netherlands decisively stepped away from its tradition of staying on the sidelines. This period saw the formation of the Benelux Union in 1944, initially a customs union between Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. The Netherlands then became a founding member of the European coal and steel community in 1952 and then the European economic community in 1957 which was modelled on the Benelux Union. This laid the groundwork for deeper economic ties among European nations and ultimately became the European Union in 1993. Then less than 10 years later, the Netherlands adopted the Euro, solidifying the Netherlands' position at the heart of Europe's economic and monetary union. However, the Dutch journey towards deeper European integration was not without its challenges. In 2005, the Netherlands held a referendum on a European constitution, which resulted in a no vote due to concerns over sovereignty, lack of clarity, preservation of cultural identity, and political dissatisfaction. As one of the six founding members of the European Union, the Netherlands continues to play a vital role in shaping the future of Europe through promoting values of peace, cooperation, and economic stability. So what about the Dutch economy? Well, this is where the Netherlands truly shines. Its GDP, reaching almost 1 trillion euros in 2022, stands as one of the highest in the EU, a remarkable feat given the relatively modest Dutch population. With a GDP per capita of 54,000 euros, it secures the fourth position in the EU, surpassing Austria and Sweden, though slightly behind Denmark and Ireland. Notably, its GDP per capita exceeds that of the European Union by 20,000 euros, highlighting its strong economy. The Dutch also benefit greatly from intra-EU trade, as it accounts for 66% of Dutch exports, namely with Germany, then Belgium, and then France. Outside of the EU, 8% goes to the US, and the United Kingdom receives 4%. As for imports, EU member states contribute 42% of imports to the Netherlands, with Germany leading, and then Belgium. Outside of the EU, 17% comes from China and 8% from the US. But before we dive into Dutch politics, I'd like to ask for your support. Subscribing, liking the video, and even better, joining our Patreon community via the link in the description. Our Patreon is packed with fantastic perks. Show your love and support for the channel and become a citizen. Gain access to our exclusive Discord community by becoming an ambassador. Enjoy a special shout out in our video credits by becoming an MEP. Get early access to videos and more Discord peaks by becoming a commissioner. Or demonstrate your extreme generosity and become a president. Every contribution, no matter the size, is invaluable. Thank you so much for being part of our community, as we couldn't do it without you. Now back to the video. So, 
Dutch politics. The Netherlands operates as a parliamentary constitutional monarchy, a system established through its constitution in 1814. The monarch, presently King Willem Alexander, fulfills ceremonial duties such as hosting state visits and endorsing parliament-approved legislation. Meanwhile, the prime minister, currently Mark Rutte, serves as the head of government, overseeing policy execution and managing governmental affairs. At the heart of Dutch governance lies a bicameral parliament, consisting of a lower house of representatives and a upper senate. The house of representatives comprises 150 members elected every four years through proportional representation, ensuring fair representation of Dutch voters' preferences. The Senate comprises of 75 members and is elected by local councils after local elections. This setup helps make sure all regions have a say in the country's laws. So who's in charge in the House of Representatives? Well, things have recently changed as the Dutch national elections last year brought a seismic shift in Dutch politics. Completely contrary to expectations, the populist right-wing party for freedom, led by Geert Wilders, won in a landslide, gaining 37 out of the 150 seats. The Green Left Labour Party followed in second place, with the previously dominant People's Party for Freedom and Democracy trailing in a disappointing third. However, with over 15 parties in parliament, it's really hard to create government coalitions. The last one took 271 days to form. A likely coalition of four parties could lead to a right-wing government, with 88 out of 150 seats. But talks have stopped because the NSC party, holding 20 seats, left the discussions. This makes it unclear if a coalition will happen and if Geert Wilders will become prime minister. Therefore, the previous government continues to operate as a caretaker administration until a new coalition emerges. This caretaker government, comprising of the VVD, D66, CDA and CU, maintains a centre-to-centre-right stance, with Mark Rutte at the helm. The caretaker government focuses on a strong economy, fighting climate change, building affordable homes and playing a big role in the EU. If Wilders forms a government, things could change a lot. His plans include a move towards a de-Islamization of the Netherlands, the implementation of much stricter immigration policies, a reduced emphasis on climate change initiatives, and the pursuit of a sovereign Netherlands, including a potential Nexit referendum. But it's still uncertain how much of this he can do, because a lot of it depends on who he partners with in a coalition. On to the European level where the Netherlands has allocated 28 seats in the European Parliament in accordance with its population. Among the 27 countries, the Netherlands ranks 7th in terms of MEPs, with Germany, the most populous, having 96 MEPs, and Malta, the smallest, having only 6 MEPs. One Dutch MEP is a member of the far-left party, The Left. Six are part of the center-left S&D group, three have joined The Greens, Seven are part of the centrist liberal Renew Europe group. Five are part of the center-right EPP group. Five have joined the Eurosceptic conservative ECR group. And finally, one is a non-attached member. The Netherlands, like all EU member states, is represented in the European Commission. Dutch Commissioner Frans Timmermans resigned as the Executive Vice President and Climate Action Commissioner last year to lead the Green Left Labour Coalition in the Dutch elections. Following his departure, Wopke Hoekstra has taken over as the new Climate Action Commissioner. And then there's Mark Rutte, and whether you like him or hate him, he has been a pivotal figure in the EU. Since taking office in 2010, he has established the Netherlands as essential negotiators within the Union, balancing both national and European interests. He often navigated complex negotiations and fostered consensus between the member states. On an EU level, his expected departure is viewed by many as a significant loss. So let's chat about the Dutch relationship with the EU. Do the two get along? The Dutch are generally positive about the EU. According to a recent survey, 54% of Dutch people view the EU in a positive light, while only 18% see it negatively. The rest, at around 28%, are on the fence, feeling neutral about it. In fact, the Dutch are very fond of further EU integration on a whole host of issues. 85% of respondents want a common defense and security policy, 
80% want a common energy policy, 52% support EU enlargement, and a staggering 84% want a common European asylum system. Despite the Eurosceptic Party for Freedom's victory in the late 2023 general election, the majority of Dutch citizens are pro-EU and support further EU integration. It raises questions though about Geert Wilders' manifesto, which includes a referendum on EU membership, shifting the Netherlands from a contributor to a beneficiary of EU funds, reclaiming sovereignty from Brussels, and opposing EU expansion. In our opinion, the Party for Freedom probably won the election because of its strict policies on immigration, not because Dutch people want to leave the EU. However, surveys do reveal a notable desire among the Dutch to reform the EU, with 46% of respondents advocating for change, significantly above the EU average of 27%. Not to mention, the Netherlands ranks as the third largest net contributor to the EU budget, contributing 7 billion euros more than it receives. This is particularly impressive, given that the Netherlands has only the seventh largest population in the EU. Therefore, some Dutch people question the value of their hefty EU contributions, sparking debates over the fairness and benefits of their membership. Overall, the Dutch have a pragmatic relationship with the EU, valuing its economic and political benefits, while also voicing concerns about sovereignty, financial contributions, and the pace and direction of further integration. The balance between these factors continues to shape Dutch policies and attitudes towards the EU. But what are your thoughts on the Netherlands' role in the EU? Dutch viewers, we would love to hear from you in the comments. And if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. And for more support, consider joining our Patreon. Until next time.